Howdy, welcome to another edition of Plastic Models by a Regular Dude. Uh, today I'm just going to do a real quick review on the Tamiya 125th scale Tiger 1 tank that I am going to build for the uh, for Tactical Jackalopes that 70s build. And the model is supposed to be completed by the end of December. And I think I'm going to be able to do that, um, but not until 2016. Just kidding. Um, yeah, this is. Uh, I haven't got started on this quickly as I wanted to, but anyway, I'm gonna do just a quick review of what's in the box uh, to kind of get the uh, the build rolling. And I plan on doing kind of a video series on this one, since it's gonna be out of the box. It's gonna be part of my, uh, you know, helping out beginners kind of thing. Just talk about some of the techniques and what I'm going to do and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, uh, let's take a look and uh, see what we got inside this box. Okay, so here it is in its huge box. And I've pointed out before, but you can tell by all the stains and grody stuff. I've had this thing for a long time. So without further ado take the lid off and I don't know if you how well you can tell on the uh, on the uh, video here but these instructions are quite yellowed from age and it is a stinking book as you can see here or magazine it's just full of stuff um, on the front um, it gives the uh, Man, it gives all the technical data, you know, engine manufacturer type, cylinders, bore stroke, cylinder displacement. I mean, it gives all that stuff. Um, overall dimensions, track width, all that kind of stuff. It's kind of cool. It gives you a lot of really good information. And, uh, you know, it's probably common knowledge stuff nowadays. But before, when I first bought this kit, I mean, there wasn't very much a person could just find quickly. Um, then it gets into, it's got a couple of pages talking about the development of the vehicle. Um, talks about the Porsche versions, uh, all kinds of stuff. I mean, it's just, so one, two, three, four. The first four pages are completely about the history of the vehicle. It talks about um, you know, regimental headquarters tank, companies, platoons, I mean, it gets all into the, uh, you know, how the, how the regiments were set up. I mean, it's just got a lot of information. It's kind of neat. Uh, it's got a nice, uh, cutaway drawing of the vehicle. And then it gets into the actual... Um, construction part of it and I'm not going to get into detail because you know it's to me instructions they're pretty concise um, it's all in English there's no Japanese on this one I think I think back then that they they whenever they released a kit they released them with either Japanese or English instructions um, I mean that's the way I used to buy the kits I remember you could buy the kits cheaper if you bought them with the uh, Japanese instructions as opposed to the English instructions uh, but you know as as you go through the instructions it, it has uh, photographs of the actual vehicle uh, more photographs of the actual vehicle um, a uh, small photograph of the vehicle itself uh, more photos obviously from a museum because the hatches even though they're open they have mesh over them now I see a 31 there I'm wondering if this is 131 from Bovington uh, before it was in running order because all the hatches are closed up that's good I'd, I'd like to find that out but anyway it shows all the instructions you know it, it's designed to come apart because it does have rudimentary interior and I guess back then it was a pretty uh, pretty nice interior 
but by today's standards it's really basic. I actually built one of these years ago, well, I mean a long time ago, and it just I, I didn't like it and I ended up shooting it up with a pellet gun, me and my brother. But then he bought this uh, for me again um, around the mid 80s and uh, I've had it all this time just waiting to, to put it together. Uh, more photographs, this is a photograph of the the model kit with the cutaway so you can see the interior. Uh, the figures and the figures are just hideous. Uh, then it has a painting guide. has some uh, photos of the different um, camouflage schemes. Uh, you got the dot um, dot pattern or one of the dot patterns. I don't know how many there are but then it has like a, more of a looks like almost like a splinter camouflage but it's hard to tell from that little tiny photo. And then the decals more photos, decal placement, and I'm, I'm thinking those photos from the museum is 131 because that's the number that's on this vehicle here. So that's kind of interesting. Now one thing you'll note is if you, if you look at this picture here, or this illustration, one of the complaints about these old Tamiya kits, including this one, was the fact that the turret, you know, it's got kind of this horseshoe shape, it's symmetrical when it should be asymmetrical. So that was one of the complaints about the accuracy of this, uh, these older Tamiya kits. Um, then it has like a full listing of what all the parts are on the uh, on the sprues. Um, so you know that's basically the instructions. Um, more photographs showing some detail of the engine deck. So nice little book of everything. So next up, there is a uh, looks like a paint guide. Um, overall dark yellow, Panzer gray, uh, green and yellow camo, two different styles. Uh, then the tricolor, and then a couple of uh, um, white uh, winter camouflage versions. Look like this one's over a yellow base. This one's over a gray base. So. I'm really thinking that I want to do uh, a winter camouflage scheme. Um, I've only done winter, one winter camo vehicle. Didn't turn out that great, but um, I want to practice some techniques I've seen on some YouTube videos. So I'm, I'm really thinking I'm going to do a winter camo scheme. Probably over a gray base. I don't know. But anyway, that is the color chart. And now for the actual stuff itself. Now as you can see here, well, these are tracks. They're vinyl. It's one huge long piece that I put together. But this is the track from that one that I shot up with a pellet gun. And I kept it in anticipation of building another one of these. And... Uh, I'll use it for spare tracks or whatever, but they are, um, you know, independent link, and this is what they look like. Uh, the box is still stapled shut, but as you can see here, they're individual links, and uh, you snap them together, and that way the uh, the parts. Uh, you know, they're really flexible so you get a good track sag and stuff like that. And, you know, again, this is a 1969 kit, I believe. Something weird like that. Uh, yep, 1969. So, you know, that's kind of forward thinking, having those loose tracks like that. But anyway, this is spares. Um, let's see if we can see. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of... Uh, there's a lot of um, ejector pin marks. Uh, there are numbers all over these things. I don't know what the numbers are for. 09, 17, 15, 12, 6. I mean, I'm not sure why there are numbers on there. But So that's kind of grody looking. But it is on the inside of the track, so you're not really going to see it. The outside of the track is in pretty good shape. It's got a little... Little lost my pointer it's got a little stub right there 
I guess you could clip all those out, but you can't really see them on the track itself. I'll probably end up removing them. Looks like it'd be easy to remove before the tracks are put together. So anyway, that's the tracks, and this is the old the old tracks. But you know, the outside part of it is uh, pretty decent shape. I mean, it looks pretty good as far as the detail. And right there, I don't know if you can see that, but that little dent, that is from a pellet. <laughs> That's the one I shot up, and this is all that's left of it. So, anyway, that's the tracks. Um, okay, this. Now, as you can see, even though I've opened the box in the past, I have never opened these plastic bags. So, this is the first time this is being opened ever. So, I'm going to crack this baby open so you can see. And there may be some collectors out there saying, what are you opening up that old kit for, man? That's a collector's item. No, it's not. It's a model that's supposed to be built. Even though these do sell for a chunk of change on eBay. But, you know, hey, I buy these things to build them, not collect them. So, that one's open. And inside of this particular bag... I'll pull this one out first. We've got the, oh, maybe, the figures. Oh, crap. Okay, these are the figures, 125th scale figures. And they are horrible. The detail is so soft on these things, it would be a nightmare to try and paint them. Um... I did build, I did put these figures together and paint them on the other version that I did, but it, they were just, man, they're hideous. So if I could find some better figures someday, maybe I'll do them, but, you know, that's the deal. They are what they are. Old, old, old Tamiya figures. Then this part here, this uh, sprue, has the upper turret, and as you can see here, it does have some uh, nice weld detail on the top of the turret, but by looking at it here, you can see the symmetrical shape of this horseshoe uh, outline, which is, you know, incorrect. But, you know, this is 1969 kit, so it's not too bad. But yeah, that detail looks pretty, or that weld detail looks really nice. I forgot I had that on there. So that looks pretty good. Uh, this is the uh, rear um, rear of the hull where the exhaust and everything goes. Uh, then there's the two turret halves. And it does have a bit of texture to it. I had forgotten it had texture. I, from what I remember, it was smooth. But this does have some texture to it, so that's kind of nice. Um, that'll be one less thing I have to worry about doing. Same with the front. of the hull, more weld marks, which are kind of nice, and it's got some nice, um, some nice texture on it. It's pretty subtle, but it does have texture, so that's, that's kind of cool. So that is that sprue. one we have now this one's stapled together so this will be easier to get open uh, this is some of the detail parts um, grab handles uh, the uh, mounts for the smoke dischargers um, jack block uh, the f uh, parts of the FIFO air cleaners the uh, tool bin for the back of the uh, the turret, some tools, uh, cleaning rods, more tools, the tow ropes, which they don't look too bad, but they do have a seam going around the outside edge. So I'll be I'll be scratch building those because apparently uh, Andy has said that scratch building is okay for. Um, for this kit and just no aftermarket so I'll, I'll be redoing these tow cables I'll just use the ends um, 
tow hooks, just small little detail parts. Uh, looks pretty good. Not really any flash that I can see. I will have some seams to deal with when I put the uh, air cleaners together. There's a little bit of flash on the sledgehammer and a sink mark, but that's that's easy stuff to fix. So that's that part. That is sprue C. Then we have, well, let's go with this one here. This is sprue D. And that is uh, part of the barrel. And then we got the barrel the mantlet which again has some nice bit of texturing going on fenders um, exhaust covers exhaust hatches for the uh, turret and a nice dandy two-piece barrel which is looks really straight so it should be easy to put together and clean up and then that is part of the muzzle brake there. It goes on the front. So that'll look that'll look decent. And all these parts are made that the hatches, they're made to uh, they're designed to operate so you can open the open the hatches up so you can see inside. Um, so that all looks pretty good. The mantlet has some nice texture to it. The sleeve that the barrel inserts into a smooth. Not sure if that's supposed to be or not, but I'll find out. So that is sprue D. That's the base of the barrel there. That huge 88 millimeter gun. Looks like we can start getting getting into the interior parts. Um, this part or this sprue has uh, interior parts. It's got the machine guns. One of them is pretty warpy looking. It's kind of bowed, so I may have to heat that, straighten it up. Uh, machine gun ammo pouches, uh, parts of the gun. Um, Looks like uh, hinges, uh, steering wheel, jack, ammo, bins. Uh, it's got just a rudimentary engine, so when you're looking through the louvers, at least there's something in there. So that's kind of nice. I forgot I had that. Uh, the seats, and the seats have some really nice texture. So the um, painted properly, it'll give a, an appearance of leather. So that's kind of nice. Same with the uh, the spent shell um, bag pouch, whatever you want to call it. Once the spent shells came out of the breech, they would fall into this bag. So that's got some nice texture on it, and I know those were leather. Uh, that's the front of the radio there, which has got you know the deep the dials have some nice detail, so it should be easy to paint. So that's some of the interior stuff there. I think that's the loader or commander seat right there. So that's sprue F. Um, more interior. I'm not going to open this bag up. This one is the torsion bars. Uh, the nice thing about this kit, this is sprue J. The nice thing about this kit is these um, torsion bars, they actually work like the real deal. You, you insert these uh, in, put the wheels on, and the suspension does uh, work up and down using the torsion bar system. So that's kind of a cool feature. So if you're building a diorama with it and you were, you know, going over rough terrain, you could model that pretty easily. Torsion bars. Oh, let's see. And here's the part that I just hate. The wheels. Horrible. I hate wheels. 
It's a lot of painting. Again, these have some texture on the wheels. So that's pretty nice. Um, the drive sprockets, they look pretty good. They're going to need some cleanup. Again, I'm not going to take these out of the bag, but uh, in, you know the teeth and in between the teeth there is a seam line. So that's going to take some cleanup. There's a little bit of flash in there, but that shouldn't be too bad. The idler wheels look good. Um, all the rest of the wheels look real good. No, no flash. Um, and it doesn't look like there, there's, there are no seam marks on, on the wheels to clean up. It'll just be a matter of cleaning up the little nub where the uh, wheel is cut from the sprue uh, to do the tires. So, yeah, it won't be too bad. But there's a lot of wheels there. That was one of the parts I hated when I built this thing the first time. And then here is sprue E, which is more of the interior. And this looks like the turret interior. You got the turret floor uh, and then the side plate uh, or maybe the gunner's seat. Uh, more controls. Um, looks like a bulkhead of some kind. Uh, this is uh, where the transmission would be at the front of the vehicle. Um, yeah, this is, you know, there's the breach. So, yeah, it looks pretty good. Not much flash going on. And the way they molded it, there won't be a whole lot of cleanup on some of these parts. It's just, you know, you have to deal with seam lines whenever, uh, you know, the parts get glued together but you know this has a nice diamond plate texture to the bottom of it you know there's a fire extinguisher and again these are pretty soft and pretty crude compared to now nowadays because I mean that's that fire extinguisher is molded onto the floor plate but you know and then a, I don't know if it's a fuel can or water can I'll have to read up on that I mean it's molded right on this base it's not a separate part so there's not as many parts as there could be for a kit like this with an interior, especially the size, I mean, good grief, this would be manufactured today, it'd have a million parts. But again, it's 1969, so right there it says, I don't know if you can see it, but it says right there on that little tab, 19 and 69. I was a wee lad back then, about five years old. Ah, can you see it? Can you see it? 1969. And then we have the lower hull, and the lower hull um, right there. To me, a plastic model company. Made in Japan, 1969. Crazy. And then it's got all these numerical designations of where the different I think it's where the different uh, torsion bars go so you get them in the right order but uh, these little ridges right here allow you to tension the tracks I believe if I remember correctly um, but yeah that's the hole I don't know what these big giant cutouts are for I'll have to check that out but um, you know that's a heavy piece of plastic pretty large-ish and it does have texture on it um, you know it's got bolts molded there uh, some of this like right here I'll be uh, roughing that up to give it like a like a torch cut look to it um, I'll have to check some resources but I'm pretty sure that's the way they looked but that's the hole and that's a big piece of plastic that's man a lot, a lot bigger then 135th scale. That's the lower hole, and then you got a bag full of uh, caps for the wheels um, to hold the wheels in place. Uh, this is the uh, these are the axles for the I believe for the drive sprockets and for the idler. There is a metal uh, shovel head in there. For the front hull, which is kind of a nice touch for a kit that old, and you just kind of fold the these little tabs over on the handle. Uh, these are the hoses for 
Fife Layer Cleaner, which has no texture. It's just smooth, and I think they're supposed to be textured, but I'll deal with that. Um, screws, small gear. That's what's used for tensioning the tracks, I believe. Um, and then a wire cable for the uh, um, used for changing tracks. So they actually included a steel cable for that, and you just wind that around the uh, the mounts on the hull. So that was kind of a nice touch. And then the other stuff, ah, the upper hull. I'm gonna slice this baby open. The upper hull and fenders. There is the upper hull and some more, probably an interior toolbox of some kind. But there's the upper hull. Again, it's got some nice, uh, nice texture to it. Nice grills. I'll have to scratch build some uh, screens for that. And it's straight, which is nice. Because one old kit I built recently, the uh, some of the larger flat parts were warped horribly. But you know, it's got nice, nice weld, weld marks around the edges. Pretty good detail. Cast texture, or not cast texture, but rough, you know, texture to it. That's kind of nice. So that looks pretty good. Fits right on top like that. Okay, and then the decals. Now these decals are ancient. Again, I mean, this is an original deal here. And I'm not sure if these decals are even going to work. But I'll give them a shot, and if not, I'll have to come up with something else. But those are the decals. And it's kind of cool because it even comes with decals. That's why I'm saying it's 131. It comes with decals, if I'm not mistaken, from the uh, whatever British unit, had, British unit had 131. That's their markings there. I'm sure it says in the instructions. But... You know, the, these are really old. The carrier film doesn't look too bad. But we'll see once we put it on there. I'm going to see if it tells me what decal. Yes. Yeah, British First Army. So, this shield here, um, these, this hourglass shape here, and then this... Uh, where is the other one? This white with the red diagonal right here, that's according to the instructions here is the badge for the British First Army. So, yep, pretty cool. Comes with markings for the Gross Deutschland, Panzer Division, uh, Hermann Goering, Panzer Division, Liebstandarte SS Adolf Hitler, um, actually two badges for that I guess one says after the Normandy operation the badge was changed to this one second SS Das Reich um, two different versions of that this kind of sideways Z with a slash through it and then it changed after the Kursk battle the badge was changed to this one which is kind of a I don't know you looking thing and then 28th Panzer Grenadier Division so those are the markings that are available on this thing, and we will see if they will actually come off this backing without falling apart. There's plenty of numbers and stuff here that I can use extras to see if they work. So if they don't, I'll, I'll figure something out. But they don't look too bad. Um, they are, they seem to be in register pretty well. Uh, the red is centered real nice nicely on onto the white um, even these smaller small little tiger emblem right there 
black and yellow that looks to be in register pretty good same with the uh, Balkan Kreutz those are everything seems to be in register so it's, it's decent as far as that goes so we'll see how they work and then the last thing that comes in the box and I remember I used to love this about Tamiya models is you'd always get these cool little pamphlets um, Tamiya's for finishing aid your model your models turn into a masterpiece uh, acrylic paints, paint marker, modeling brushes, cement pen there's the colors that they had with those pens um, cement pen brushes and then these, I love these, these little mini catalogs showed all their what they had available you know as far as armor and vehicles and aircraft and this was just to kind of give you a, a summary of what was available because they had a lot more than this motorcycles race cars figures the whole thing and then a big list I used to love looking at these things so with that that is the Tamiya 125th scale Panzer 1 SDKFZ 181 so again this is for the uh, that 70s build and I will get cracking on this soon now looking at the amount of parts I may actually be able to get this thing put together before the end of December deadline but as far as painting I'm not sure if I'll be able to, to manage that but we'll see if I get it done cool if I don't then uh, I'll just keep working on it so anyway that's it just a quick update somewhat halfway review of this kit so you have an idea of what's in the box and I'm actually going to do a build log on this video log uh, because I want this to be one of my you know as I said in the intro one of my um, beginner things you know to help beginning modelers out so I'm going to be doing quite a bit as far as you know clean up and putting stuff together and all that kind of business so anyway that's it for today thanks for watching plastic models with the regular dude and or by a regular dude and uh, I'll keep you update with more videos as this progresses